Today was supposed to be a coronation of sorts for the Sacramento Kings. It was their first home game since clinching a playoff berth. They had record fan attendance at Golden One Center, and they could have clinched the division title with a win today. But the San Antonio Spurs came into town and just had to spoil all the fun. A raucous crowd to welcome back the Kings in their first home game since clinching that playoff berth. And best believe these fans showed up and showed out. Listen to this, 18,183 fans in attendance. That breaks the record for most fans at a Kings game at G1C. This is also their 18th consecutive sellout. Now, unfortunately for all these fans, the Kings would get out to a slow start. Maybe they're suffering from the, oh, clinching playoff berth hangover. Kings trailed the Spurs 63 to 58 at intermission. Keep in mind, the Spurs are one of the worst teams in the league. And on the third quarter, Demonis Sabonis finally got the sellout crowd on their feet. Wait for it with this posterizing dunk right there. Get it, Domas. 26 points and eight rebounds for Domas on the night. Sacramento outscored the Spurs 34 to 33 in the frame. And in the fourth quarter, we all know who's throwing on the Superman cape. De'Aaron Fox, AKA Mr. Fourth Quarter. He dropped 16 of his team high, 28 points in the fourth. All right, let's fast forward to the end of regulation. About 10 seconds left on the clock. Fox doing what he do, uh, does best, but you see the defense come over. He gets the ball to Kevin Herter, who throws it up, and yeah, that shot is not going in. So we go into overtime where Doug McDermott just put on a clinic. 30 points for McDermott in this game. The Spurs outscored the Kings 19 to 11 in the overtime period, and you would be able to hear a pin drop in the arena. The Kings fall to the Spurs 144, 142 to 134. Coach Brown, make it all make sense. I don't know what their mindset was individually coming into the game. I imagine some of them thought that we were just going to be able to show up and, and beat these guys. The win was just going to happen. And, uh, you know, maybe we need to get hit in the head a few times um, in order to uh, respect the game, respect the process, and understand that we have to bring it from – the beginning of the game to the end and hopefully uh, our guys will start uh, holding each other accountable and themselves accountable with their mental preparation coming into the game especially on the defense end of the floor well we know if anyone is going to hold the kings accountable it's that man who was just talking coach mike brown now Matt, before we break down this game and the ugliness that we saw, let's just go back and celebrate a little bit. Obviously, Wednesday night was a historic moment for the Kings and the franchise. They broke the 16-season playoff drought. You and me were both in Portland mm -hmm. to experience that on um, Portland's home floor, but to say the least, Matt, I think these Kings fans have been waiting forever for this moment. Yeah, no, it was an excellent moment. And even though we knew it was coming for a while now, it's one thing to know it's coming, and it's another for it to actually happen, especially for a fan base who has hoped that it would come for 16 straight Woo. years, nearly 17 years. Uh, it, it would have been 17 a little bit later on this month. So it's been a long time coming for Sacramento Kings fans. So to have that moment... It would have been better, of course, on Monday at home against the Timberwolves. Kings didn't get that done, but they do it right away uh, in Portland, handling their business, winning that game by 40 points, too. Uh, so it wasn't necessarily a nail-biter there towards the end to know if the Kings were going to clinch or not. But to have that moment and to have the the, 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 the conversation or the narrative about the Kings' uh, playoff drought be gone. I mean, we're still going to talk about it this year when we get to the playoffs. We're still going to talk about it for context reasons, and maybe we'll bring it up for years to come because it was the longest playoff drought, oh, yeah. not just in NBA history, but in uh, North American sports, the longest active playoff drought. So we'll certainly bring it up and, and talk about it some more in the future just to provide context, but hopefully the Kings aren't getting remotely close to 16 years ever again. Heck, it shouldn't even get to six. Let's, let's make sure it doesn't get to six. Well, well, definitely the way this team is built and the pieces that they put around uh, some of their star players, well, I definitely don't think it'll be another five-year gap even at that. Now, Matt, we got to talk about the ugly, and that's what happened today. Mm -hmm. uh, you talked about it earlier. They lost to Minnesota on Monday night, which would have been great for them to clinch on their home court. And then today, they lose to an absolutely horrific San Antonio Spurs team, which is among one of the worst teams in the league. They've already been eliminated from playoff contention. Now, Matt, the thing that's most startling to me is at home, the Kings are 23-17, and 17, and they are giving up a staggering 120 points at home. 
I'm no coach, Matt, but that doesn't sound to me like a recipe for winning basketball. Yeah, and considering they're 10 games over 500 on the road. Now, that stat in itself is, to me, one of the most astonishing of the season because we didn't not just didn't expect this team to be this good. We certainly didn't expect the team to be that good on the road. Typically at home is where good teams really thought, thrive. Look at what the Golden State Warriors are doing this year. They're terrible on the road, but at home they've only lost eight games. So typically when you can defend your own uh, your home floor, that's one of the signs of, of being a good team. So the Sacramento Kings need to figure out, especially now that they've clinched home court advantage, they need to figure out what the issue is on their home floor, why, for some reason, teams come in with so much confidence while the Sacramento Kings let off the gas a little bit. And Mike Brown talked about this a little bit post-game. He, he, he focused on the fact that the one thing that worries him is sometimes this team lacks a sense of urgency uh, when, it, when it comes to playing at home. And that's a real concern for a team like Sacramento who needs to take advantage of their home floor if they're going to have any kind of playoff success long term. So, I mean, you can point to a bunch of different things. Mike thinks they're they're uh, more up for the challenge defensively on the road, and they kind of expect to win in Sacramento, so they take the foot off the gas a little bit. I would rather see the Sacramento Kings team approach every single game, regardless of opponent, of opponent as if they need to win that game. You know, it's interesting the Kings, there were concerns about Sacramento post All-Star break, right? Is this team going to be able to, they've never been in this position before, these games matter, are they going to respond? Well, the team responded. As soon as they got to a round clinching the playoffs, that's where they've started to kind of fade into the background a little bit. So now with four games remaining, only one home game left against the Golden State Warriors who they may face in the playoffs, uh, they needed to make sure that they're figuring out how to address this issue now because if they're going to struggle in game one and game two with home court advantage, they're going to have a rough playoffs. Yeah, definitely no time to get complacent right now with the Sacramento Kings team. And another thing, man, you know, you look at them defensively. They're bottom five defense in this league. Now, I get it. They put up a lot of points. They're leading the league in offense. But there's going to be times when your defensive vulnerability is going to get the best of you. You let a Spurs team with no all-stars come in here and score, what, 142 points on you? Right. So at some point in time, they have to get better defensively. And Matt, just one other thing. We've been hearing a lot of other teams talk about, oh, we want the Sacramento Kings in the first round. Because they, a lot of other teams think it will be an easy uh, playoff uh, uh, round win for them if they go against a team like Sacramento Kings. And when they have games like they had today, it doesn't help their cause. Last thing I want to talk about, Keegan Murray. He broke the rookie three-point record, surpassing Donovan Mitchell for most threes in a season. What have you seen from this stud? Well, look, this young man is absolutely incredible. And, and a lot of teams, you talk about needing big threes, right, in order to win championships. I don't know if we're ready to label this as a championship big three yet, but if the Kings are going oh, yeah. to have a big three, Keegan Murray's their third guy. I mean, as a rookie, he's already pro I mean, he's, he's, his name is up there with some of the greatest shooters of all time, some of the best players in our league today with the three-point shooting that he's shown off. He's only getting better as a rebounder, only going to get better as a defender, has already shown uh, in tremendous growth attacking the basket, attacking the rim uh, with his weak side defense. So he's so young, and this is just his first year, and he's a rookie with a primary role uh, in the starting lineup, which typically you don't see on a team as good as the Sacramento Kings from a lottery pick. He's only going to get better. The Sacramento Kings are in great shape with him. Absolutely. If he's not on the all-rookie team at the end of this season, I'm going to slap somebody. <laughs> all right. Now, I'm really not. Not, not me. Please. No one. Right. Now, remember, if you can't get enough Kings content, you can get so much more all the latest Kings talk every day on the Lockdown Kings podcast hosted by our very own Matt George. You can listen on ABC10 Plus or ABC10.com. We're right back after this.